For many of us, our schedules and rhythms and cadence of life have changed dramatically in recent weeks. Used to be I would have this rhythm of coming by a coffee shop three, four times a week to build friendships, uh, get to know the baristas. These are faces and then one of the places that I would go that I care about, that I enjoy, that I miss being able to go to. And so now I drive through, wait forever in a long line for like 20 minutes for a quick hello to as many of them as I can see through the window, order a cheap drink and leave a big tip. It's definitely changed things. And while some of the rhythms that we may have put in place when we thought this was going to be a short quarantine served us or were good for now, it might be time to start settling into some rhythms that will serve us for longer. We know that if we're going to be shaped by God, we're going to need some kind of rhythm and cadence of regularly encountering God and His people so that God has all the space that He needs to create the kind of change and shape in us that He really wants to bring. And so this week, we're going to talk about top twos. The top two relationships God uses to shape us, some top two ideas for each one of those relationships, and then even a bonus top two. First off, let's talk top two life-changing relationships. The first one, obviously, is our relationship with God. If we never spend time alone encountering Him, listening to Him, talking with Him, we can't really expect Him to shape us. And so uh, I just thought I'd share my top two ways that God's been shaping me lately. The first one is... Uh, I've been going through a psalm a day, and as I go through it, I listen for each thing along the way that just kind of draws my attention. It's interesting to me, or it makes me think of something, and I, as I copy the whole psalm into my journal, I just make a note in the, in the margin. And then when I'm done, I go back, and with each of those notes in the margin, I use those to shape up a prayer or a psalm of my own that's between me and God. And let me just tell you, the conversation with God has been rich. I've also been doing this thing where once a week I have a desert day. I get away from signal and everything else. I get out of the house. I go park at a random spot in the middle of the desert and spend that day there. Still doing my work, still doing some other things, but God shows up in some unique ways in that. What are your top two ways to encounter God in this season that could sustain you and become a healthy rhythm? I actually asked just a few friends, uh, and here's what they said. My buddy Jameson said he walks. On small walks, I don't listen to music. It gives me that small time, sometimes around the neighborhood, sometimes in the garage on the treadmill. It's a great idea. Another friend, Missy, said this, the main thing for me is that I get up in the morning at least an hour, sometimes two, before everyone else so that I can do my Bible study alone with God and talk with Him. Alone time is a premium these days, isn't it? As awesome and important as it is to interact with God on our own, It's equally vital that we do that alongside God's people, which is the second of the top two life-changing relationships, first with God, then with his people. And so how are you interacting with God's people? I know it's different. I know some of the old rhythms don't work, but what rhythms work now? For me, I've got a couple. One is uh, there's a couple of guys who've been in strict kind of quarantine circumstances in in similar ways that our family has. And so we'll actually meet up at a park and do a workout a couple, three times a week. And the conversation about God in the midst of trying to catch our breath have been so rich and good. In addition to that, Tuesday mornings, I've got this hour-long Discovery Bible study group that I do with five other guys that is so refreshing, super good. How are you interacting with God's people and listening to God in the midst of that? Uh, Again, I asked a few friends. Gabby said this. So for me, Zoom has been a huge disconnect or fail. So I've had to find ways to physically connect with people. One of those ways is by meeting them one-on-one or in a group of three in an open area such as a park. We put our blankets six feet away and we'll chat and play, worship music and do yoga sometimes or just journal and draw. Another friend, Stacy, said, currently it's chatting with neighbors on our respective porches as the kids play in yards or coffee lunch dates over FaceTime with friends who fill me up and encourage me. So here's a bonus top two. We know that rhythm helps us, but sometimes the downside of rhythm is that it leads us to compartmentalize things and put things in nice, tidy, neat little boxes and never take them out except at their just right times. But that's not how relationships actually work, is it? Relationships are served by rhythm and seeing people regularly, but there's also really great things that happen in the random times. So that's the bonus top two, rhythm and random. When we prioritize a rhythm of being with God alone and with his people, 
that fuels us and feeds us and reminds us that in all the random times throughout the day, God's present. He's with us. We can invite him in at meal prep and dinner time, during workouts and drives along the way. We want all of life, every second of life, more and more to be full up with God's presence, that we would know that he's with us all the time. And so we give you three top twos, right? The top two relationships with God and with God's people, right? And we talked about my top two and maybe your top two ways. I hope you'll post them in the comments of of fueling and feeding those relationships and rhythm, especially having to reimagine that in quarantine. And this final top two, this blend and tension of, of a rhythm to relationship, but embracing the random times as well. I hope that this fuels you, and more than that, I hope you'll inspire us and challenge us, encourage us, put your ideas in the comments, and maybe we'll find some fresh ways to breathe life into the relationship we have with God and with His people in this time of quarantine. Can't wait to hear from all of you. We'll see you soon.